Uh, have we, are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, we are. Okay, can we take the roll? Sure. We have Chair Wright. Here. Vice Chair Stolo. Here. Commissioner Bellis. Excused. Commissioner Hosh. Excused. Commissioner Wright. <coughs> Sorry. Commissioner White here. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Clink. Excuse. Commissioner McMillan Arnold. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Levine. Excuse. Commissioner Beck. Excuse. <coughs> and Commissioner Hotchkiss, could you just confirm that you are participating via teleconference, please? Yes, I am on the phone. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Commissioner Millman. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Mooney. Here. Commissioner Serfa. Excuse. Thank you. Uh, item three. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name for the record. The amount of discussion as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. I understand we, uh, item four, we need to entertain a motion to obey the minutes uh, until next month. Can I? So moved. Thank Second. you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carried. Number five. Abeyance item? Uh, now, I, I thought I understood that this item would be stricken in favor of the item afterwards, after it? It still has to be read. Okay. Abeyance item. Uh, for possible action regarding the Historic Preservation Commission Centennial Legacy Grant application for friends of the fort in the amount of $5,217.36. Staff request that this item be stricken from the agenda because the uh, actual applicant is Dr. Lynn Miller and not friends of the court, so we've added an additional item. The following item will, will uh, address this application. Okay. Uh, item six, then, for possible action regarding the Historic Preservation Commission Centennial Legacy Grant application from Dr. Linda Miller in the amount of $5,217.36. Oh, we need oh, I'm sorry. Did we need a vote on that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, on item five, uh, <coughs> is there a motion to approve that? No, to strike. To strike. To so, strike. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Then number six. I'll read it again. For possible action regarding the Historic Preservation Commission. Centennial Legacy Grant application from Dr. Linda Miller in the amount of $5,217.36. Uh, Dr. Linda Miller has submitted a, a Centennial Legacy Fund application for costs associated with the publication and distribution of the book Images of America in Las Vegas. I brought a copy with me today as well if we need to uh, pass it around. At the April 24, 2013 HPC meeting, Vice Chair Stovall and Commissioner Millman volunteered to coordinate with Dr. Lenore on the creation of an errata sheet to be placed inside each book before it is distributed to local schools. Vice Chair Stovall and Commissioner Millman submitted comments to Dr. Miller for review, and she in turn um, submitted uh, her responses to these comments, which are attached to the staff report, for review at today's meeting. Dr. Linda Miller has provided a cost estimate of $3,386.46 from Arcadia for a second printing of 350 copies of the book with corrections. Dr. Linda Miller has not previously received funding from the HPC Centennial Legacy Fund. However, she and friends of the court have received funds from the Commission for Las Vegas Centennial uh, uh, for different projects and have met all program requirements. Uh, I, I'm a little bit confused on the uh, on the the fifty two seventeen. Is that what that is? Right. 
Well, my question, I maybe explain my confusion. Uh, I thought this, this book was already published. It is, yes. And so the cost of the copyright from UNLE has already been covered. This grant was submitted um, as a reimbursement grant after the project was um, completed because there was a lax in time where we were not accepting grant proposals. So does she fund the money herself then? The, the the oh, the print the fort. Still confused. We took the fort out of the first grant, and now we're it's put it back in because we're going to pay the fort. They were not the applicants. The official applicant was Dr. Linda Miller. Well, actually, I made it on behalf of the first fort. Mm -hmm. I expressed the first Okay. Apologize for the confusion. Okay. And if I could clarify the different amount after the last meeting, I did get them to reduce the cost down two hundred dollars. And with the concerns that we had, uh, I said, you know, we got the funding here, uh, at state and other projects, and they agreed to do a second print. Oh, and so I have. So let me go continue with with this. If this is a friend of the four grant, if the money is going to go to the friend of the four, does that put one of our commissioners in a challenge, in a conflict at all? He's not getting the money directly, but it's going to the organization. Who? I would have to abstain. Wait, may I ask, Ms. Miller, you submitted a grant, a reimbursement grant, for money is based upon the first printing of this book, correct? Uh, for the production, yeah. When so I the production for it wasn't even produced yet. I understand, yeah. but we have an application. Right. It's got your name on it. Yes. And, it's at, and the request is for reimbursement for... Um, the copyrights. Okay, $1,530 from the OB. Uh -huh. $70 from the Mass State Museum. And 36, 17, 36 for 350 copies of your book? Uh, well, I think that's the higher amount. I got it up and down $200. Okay. Yeah, so, 350 copies of the book. So this, so, so somebody sounds like uh, to pay these costs, you did not, you did not pay the costs. You, didn't, you Ms. Miller, did not use credit card or write a check. The Friends of the Fourth wrote a check paying these costs. We submitted an application. Um, from what I recall from our last meeting, I, I, I thought you said that this was an application on your behalf and not on behalf of the Friends of the Fourth. But what you're now saying is that you submitted it uh, uh, in your name on behalf of the Friends of the Fourth. Here's my question. If the, if the HBC approves the, the grant, we're going to have to cut a check to somebody. Who's the check being cut to? Prince of Okay. Uh, yeah. I, for the copyright zone. For the copyright zone. Yeah, the book will go to our team. So there would be, there'd be a number, call it $55,000 or somewhat to change. Um, What do you be looking at? Okay. So, so then you would actually you were you'd be asking the city to cut checks to different to, to different groups. We wouldn't be giving the money to you you'd, and you would be giving it to others. You'd be wanting us to split the check. Well, that's, that's how it works. Work. That's how it works. Okay, I'm sorry. That's how it works. Okay, so we can three. pay off the invoices. Okay, so, okay. So one of the invoices is <laughs> Is one of the invoices to friends of the fort in the amount of some three thousand dollars for the thing? No, Arcadia. Arcadia and so one would be to the fort for a reimbursement for the copyright. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because what I'm hearing is one would be Arcadia on payment, and then hearing that. So I myself would be in there. I just want to understand. 
is the French of Ford fronted the money for the copyrights and they paid UNLV. Yeah. So one of the checks the city would write would be to the French of Ford to reimburse them for the money they gave in advance for the copyrights. Yes, the second check would go to Arcadia for the printing. The connection, the, the less nexus between that and the Ford is that the Ford gets the money from the sale of the book. Mm-hmm. So those are the two connections for the French of the Ford. But we're not selling the book, we're giving it away. To the schools. The 300. To the schools. These 300. So there are none, none for sale at the, uh, no. nobody's selling the book. Not of these 350 that I'm requesting funding for. They go totally free to the schools. The original okay, printing. No. Yeah. So how many, how many were printed originally? Well, I don't know, but that doesn't make any difference. If the important point is that there is not going to be an errata sheet. I've convinced them to do a second printing with the corrections. I, I think that's another issue. I think we're still we're still on the first the first issue, which is the 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 fund. Where does this money go from the sale of the books? The friends of the Ford. She's t- I'm talking about 350 not, books. No, the original book. The original print. The original. This original right. printing. The original printing. Where does but that money go? That's not go? part of this print. The sale well, well, of the original books are not part of the Excuse me. The, there were the X number of books printed. 350 of that X number, which for some reason is a secret, uh, w- is, is to go to the schools. No, this is a new no. printing. No. No. Okay. no, 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 no. I'm, excuse me. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. The original request was for this board to pay for 350 copies of the book that would be distributed to the school, as well as the money that would go to UNLV, or has gone, would go to the fort. That's that that money, okay? X number of books have been printed using the copyright that that this board is expected to pay for. The money for those other books, that money goes to the fort. So, so in essence, we are paying for the copyright for all the books, not just the 300, the 350. Right. I, I would say that the, the gentleman that's on the phone, that is on the board, should abstain from this matter. Right? And so, could you could you just for the record abstain from this matter and give a reason why? Uh, yeah, no, no, excuse me. I will abstain from uh, voting in this matter because I am the president of the Friends of the of Fort Board, and probably would be inappropriate for me to vote uh, for money to be moved from one organization to another. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I just, okay. Now, that's, okay, so that's fine. Right. So I, I think I think we're okay. I have a question. question. I have a question. Um, so a copyright is a blanket copyright for all the books that will ever be published from this. Is that correct? I don't know that. I don't know what the, I don't know what the terms of the deal are. Yeah, there's, there, there, there will be terms of the deal, I would imagine. I, I'm not going to imagine. That I can speculate that mm-hmm. the you know, these special collections has granted uh, Ms. Miller a copy for as many books as she wishes to okay. this. But okay. I, don't, okay. I don't have it in front of me, so I don't know. Okay. I'm going to guess that's the case. Okay. She might be able to Ms. Miller might be able to ask that. Uh, Ms. Uh, no. Yes. I'm looking at the breakdown for $5,217 is $3,600 goes for the 350 copies of books for only Las Vegas. Then the UNLV copyright and $70 goes to the Nevada State Museum for um, copyrights also. So I'm just wondering, when you're talking about checks and the confusion and the breaking down, mm-hmm. are these checks, then the $3,600 goes to, for instance, Fort? Arcadia. Goes to Arcadia. The 1530 goes to? UNLV. UNLV. That's well, what we will make the check, that, the check out to. I think that's <coughs> to the Friends of the Fort. That the Friends of the Fort. And including the 70 also. And the 70 for the United yeah. State Museum right. goes to Friends of the Fort. Right, right. They already paid for it. Okay, so we're actually reimbursing Friends of the Fort the $5,200 that they 
front. Yeah. I don't know if they printed no. the 36 no. yet. I don't okay. Think. Yeah. So you, in essence, it sounds like you're getting 700 books for $3,600. I don't know what would happen to the first 350 copies. They weren't, we, they weren't no, printed, no, I don't no, think. They oh, they wouldn't have no. printed. Oh, maybe, or were they? No. This is a separate thing. Yeah, this is, thank you. They're separate printing. And it's not um, 3600 I only was given 10 months of the computer. It's 3300 that we got to to reduce it. So, and, and then we the made the corrections, so there wouldn't be a need for an errata sheet. Right, and this is the email. I think they make copies with them on that. So, they will, um, you know, like Bob said earlier, it's unusual to make a seven printing. Them for the books and for the 150th, and you know, any future events. Um, we're, I, I, we're, we're on the second item here, which, which I, I, I just want to make sure we, we clear up the first matter. Uh, again, the issue is the, the nexus with the with the of the four. So the the copyright, the $1,700, or excuse me, the $1,500. Well, it's actually 16 if you count the state meeting. That. The grant is being asked to for this board of fund covers all of the books, those that are uh, potentially going to be printed and given to the school, and those that are were printed already and are being sold, and the money would go to the friends of the four. Correct. That's the intent. Okay. So that that answered my that, that answered the the, 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 the that question. Then before us is a new proposal that we, rather than uh, what David and I were tasked with, was to come up with an errata sheet that would be included in the 350. Correct. If that's what we were tasked with. Now I find on the agenda is an, art, uh, uh, an agenda item that says we're going to fund the second printing. Uh, uh, and, and so I've got some... First of all, the errata process was not finished. Let me say this to the entire commission. Dave and I went through and, and did a, uh, what I would call about a, uh, spent maybe 16, 18 hours, 20 hours uh, a, a piece on this and found what I could consider the, the obvious errors and, and submitted those to, uh, to Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller, in turn, uh, sent a response back to each one of those, a detailed response to uh, two separate ones, one of the narrative and one that's more sort of bullet points, and agreed with 30 or 40 of the, of the, of the corrections to be made, and disagreed on, on several. Say so she rejected, she rejected them. I would have to say that, that Dr. Miller put in at least 200 hours selecting the photos, uh, uh, researching the captions. She sent it off to, uh, I think in her list, she sent off the 14 reviewers to have the facts check. These are 14 knowledgeable historians. Of that, Dr. Mill said 10 responded, of the 10, 6 sent in corrections, and 4 said no corrections were needed. The bottom line to me was the, the number of opportunities for improvement the fact checkers missed and truly did Dr. Miller a real disservice to the point that the limited work that David and I did uncovered the 30 or 40 points. Took a look at the book last night, just to kind of get ready for, the, for this meeting. Found two more significant errors, two more major errors than just they were just sitting up there. One talks about uh, uh, Will Stewart and uh, Cashman running for the county commission in separate seats in 1921. And interestingly enough, they both got the same number of votes. So, oh, that's interesting. I went on to the county commission election line, looked for the history. Well, it wasn't in 1921. The election was in 1920. And no, they didn't. They didn't get the exact same number of votes. It was, it was different. Then there was another one where President Coolidge signed the Boulder Dam Canyon Act in 1930. It wasn't president in 1930. Hoover was president. He signed it in 1928. I mean, so my, my point in that is, is I would recommend that, that Dr. Miller send this book back to all those reviewers that she counted on, 14 different people that she counted on after all the work that she put in, and she counted on somebody to check this for her, 
and tell them that we want this really fact-checked. Uh, uh, beyond that, I don't think it's ready for, for a second public or second, second uh, so I could not support a, a, a motion to have it republished at this point. Just to be clear, the recommendation from staff is not to fund the second printing. That was just a note to say that she had contacted Arcadia and they agreed to do a second printing with corrections. Um, and also, um, the recommendation was uh, that the, the from staff for approval was that the project meets the grant requirements. Um, our cap on small grant funds is five thousand. So I just wanted to clarify those two things. David, Linda, I just have a, a, a minor question about the email, where it says that they will reprint. They have agreed to reprint when. The remaining, when those sell down, which means they're not going to reprint until they're out of the ones they have now, right? Mm -hmm. So the ones that, so that we don't know when that would be, right? It could be sooner, but we don't really know. Right. Yeah. Right? Um, it's just we're not paying for a second reprinting. There's a lot of confusion in terminology here. They have graciously agreed to do a set printing with these corrections, you know that. You have suggested. Right, but, but not until the ones they have are right. gone. But we don't right. know when that's going to be. So we need to get them corrected so that they can do something. You know, my, my point is a, is a timeline thing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, all, I'm being very specific here. I'm just saying they haven't, they've agreed to reprint however, whatever terminology you want to use when their existing stock is gone. But we don't know when their existing stock will be gone. That could be tomorrow, that could be a year from now. Oh, it won't be that long, but we have to get it prepared. Because it takes a long time for them to No, I've dealt with Arcadia a lot. Believe me, I know how they work. I'm just I'm just trying to make a technical point in that I don't think we can put anything in, in concrete without knowing when the remaining without knowing when they're going to actually do this. If we're talking about bringing them into the school district, we don't know when that's going to happen. I'm just, that, that's all. I'm not trying to make a bigger point on it. I'm just, that's Well, that's is there question. any way for Arcadia to notify uh, Dr. Miller when the books are, are gone? I mean, you right. know, they ought to have an idea of that. But, but you've got 300 books out there that are incorrect. I've seen that Arcadia, I've seen Arcadia books sell immediately. I've seen them die without selling any, right. you know. It was a technical point. I'm not trying to make a big deal about it. I'm just saying it's something I think to be aware of. That's all. I want to make sure, oh, want to make sure that, that as we move forward and we get into the, the book publishing business, even through the back door, that if this is going to have the stamp of the city of Las Vegas, there needs to be a, a, a process where the city is not embarrassed to where there is not something within the material that the city, the taxpayers fund, that's inappropriate. And I'm not suggesting that this book is inappropriate. Secondly, if we're, we're saying we're funding this because we want to get it into the, uh, into the school district because it, it, there's a, a gap uh, in, in published material, I think it would be nice to talk to the school district and ask them, what, what, are their, what is the gap that they have in the Vatican? Where's the focus? That, that they would say, you know what, we don't have anything that covers the early, uh, the early period of Las Vegas history in the 1800s and the early 1900s. That maybe a suggestion would be that we, if we're going to get into the book printing business. And now I do have, a, I, I went through this book several times. Uh, and there's a real, there's a real lack of diversity in this book. There's a couple of Indians, a couple of Native Americans, a couple of Paiutes. Uh, there's one reference that I found for an African American had to do with uh, uh, bringing baseball uh, or starting a, a, an all-black team. But if we're talking about that this book is, 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 is represented is, is to be one to show the diverse character of the human beings that contributed to the early days of Las Vegas, I think there's some opportunities again. Uh, uh, for for this for this to be expanded. When I read it last night, I said, "You know what? This sounds like this seems to be a mixture of two books. 
a Helen Stewart book and then an early Las Vegas book. It didn't seem to really have that, that, that total focus. But those are sort of personal asides in, 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 in reading this. I'd be more concerned to make sure that the facts are, are as accurate as possible. From what you're saying, Bob, it sounds, frankly, the book's not ready for prime time yet. If you you made, let's say, 40 corrections that Dr. Miller agreed to, but last night, just glancing at it, you found two more without really working at it, and I saw when we were worried about the history squares down on East Fremont, and people were, oh, you're nitpicky and you're nuancing, but facts are facts. A president was a president when he was the president, and nobody can quarrel with that. And I would not support paying for any copies of this book until those kind of things are vetted and fixed. And you uh, both were very gracious to donate all your time looking at this, because you certainly need to be compensated for doing that. And I like your suggestion for to send it back to her reviewers and ask for help that they did not give the first go-round. Yeah, I, I think it was really a, a total disservice to, to I mean, I, you can see the, the work that the doctor put into this book. You can just sense the amount of time to select the photographs and, and to, uh, to do what she did and then deal with other people. Yeah. And, and then to have these, these, these folks, and, and we all know, or at least most of us, uh, I know most of the people that she asked for, and not respond to her, I, I think it's because even I could make a mistake in a, in a book. I know the part. Yeah. Uh, 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 so that that where can you get that? <laughs> so I don't know if we need a motion or we. Well, I, I don't think we should include in a motion that she should send it back to those reviewers. Okay. They didn't do justice the first time. They didn't find any corrections, maybe a few. So I don't think they're going to do justice this time. I think she needs to find different reviewers, maybe even some historians right here in the room who can uh, really fact check this for her. I mean, you've done it I'm, I'm about, I won't have re rewritten the book, so I, I'm done with this book for right now. I'm done with, 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 with fact checking on it. I, I, uh, and I would like what I submitted uh, 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 over the weekend, it was, it was late, but our, David, my response to the so there's some helpful information in there, but I can't speak for David, but for, for myself, uh, I look forward to somebody else doing all the fact checking and, and well, we'll, we'll I, check their facts. I think we've done it. I, mean, I think the latest response is, 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 about, is as good as it's close to as good as it's going to get. Okay. Now, the well, latest there's response one. There's the other one I found in Las Vegas. I say close. Was, yeah. The, the, the town was shut down in 1906 for six months because there's no train service. I missed that one. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no record of that. Yeah. How about if we just table the item to a future date not to be stipulated and she can bring it back to us again when she has a new version of the book? I'll check that motion. All right, that was a motion. All right, thank you. Uh, is there, do you want us? Say a time or just leave no, it just I don't want to just table it open ended. Okay. And so she has a chance to make corrections, find other reviewers. I kind of agree with Clay T. These reviewers didn't do any favors, so I wouldn't go back to them. But I would find somebody else. Maybe there's a graduate student in history or something that they would want to take on as a project. I don't know. But you would then my mine would be Dr. Miller. You can come back to us again next month, six months from now, whatever, and say, here's my revised book, and here's the request for funding. I don't want us to support anything going into schools that has major factual errors in it. I think that's just wrong. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I just really appreciate what Bob has done, what mm -hmm. David has done. I'm kind of new to the group, but uh, have spent some time in academia. <laughs> And uh, I just think it's a quality thing that we, we have to do. And I really feel sorry for Dr. Miller. I can tell she's a very forthright person that tried to get this together. And these people did her disservice. But um, uh, I think she suffers more 
by this going on with the uh, incorrect facts. It's a, a discredit to her professional reputation as well. So I think we all kind of join forces here to help the city out, help our credibility out, and help, help Dr. Miller. All right. Uh, actually, all in favor of Bob's motion? My motion is I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mary's motion. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. A presentation by the Las Vegas History Museum regarding a Las Vegas history exhibit located within the Las Vegas Arts District at 1114 South Main Street. The uh, nonprofit Las Vegas History Museum aims to provide the most amount of Las Vegas history in the least amount of space. They are designing a permanent photo and text timeline of significant events in Las Vegas history in the front of a 1200 square foot space in the Arts District, and the rear of the space would house a permanent life on the history exhibit and temporary historical exhibits and events, such as oral history presentations. Um, the Las Vegas History Museum plans to use all museum sources and would like to involve the HTC and community. Um, did I get that right? Okay, good. Perfect. We have a representative who can probably provide some, some more details. Okay. Ideally, I'd come in here if it's possible for your screen. Uh, mm -hmm. If not, we have the hand. Up. Up. Oh, 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 I wrote a timeline. Oh, 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 Excuse me, Madam Chair. If you don't mind, can I just confirm that Commissioner Hoskins is still on the line? Just every now and then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Dave Van Zanten, and this is Colleen Gibson. And although we know very little about history, we're, we have a goal, and that goal is to uh, make Las Vegas history uh, easy and fun, and to give uh, Las Vegans and tourists alike the most amount of history and the least amount of space, and necessarily, uh, for now anyway, for the least amount of money. Um, this is my building. It's down in the Arts District. Probably during my many times probably remember or not, but it's uh, it's just south of Charleston on Main Street. Big yellow building to the left, to the south side here is Vicky Greco, defense attorney, and to the north side here is Eight Ball Bill So we're going to be upgrading the neighborhood. I'm supposed to get in trouble. You have far to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so this is the front door you can see with a gentleman walking by the front front door there. That would correspond to this door here. And so as folks walk in, they're gonna they're going to see a um, uh, six panels front and back of historically significant photos or uh, fun, entertaining photos. It's not all. I mean, I guess by their nature, if they're 30, 40 years old, they're Historic, some of historic significant, but like the Sands collection, UNLV uh, uh, Sands uh, Sands collection there, uh, and special collections I, I really like. Um, so just the location is a good location, and that it's there are a lot of people that get down in the arts district now. It's downtown. It's if someone's in town where they're uh, a husband and wife team, where one's going to the outlet mall. Uh, the other can go maybe spend an hour and learn a little bit about Las Vegas history. So that's kind of that's where the, the tourist aspect of it. And then the locals um, for First Friday, if no other time, um, hopefully we'll stroll in and, and give us a visit. 
Um, the uh, as you uh, cross into the second room, we're working or hope to set up a display of kind of life in the life in the neighborhood. What was life like? And within a few miles of the arts district, 30, 40 years ago, we'll consult probably with it. We'll consult with Jack there. I think he has some expertise in that area of the Scotch 80s, and Mary has some, I see some expertise in the John S. Park. Not necessarily, but he's much older, so he was around <laughs> <laughs> the 30s. <laughs> so that's the goal. I mean, you guys have, you probably have some content. Um, we hope to leverage, um, and, and uh, as well as, uh, as on the next slide, we'll look back there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your, your facts will be a gospel yeah. in our, as far as we're concerned. And then, you know, in terms of revolving display, um, we had a chance to go to the Neon Museum still this month, probably last month, um, for the Moulin Rouge uh, 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 unveiling of the Moulin Rouge sign, and that's, you know, that's Stan Armstrong briefly, and uh, so hopefully it would uh, play T and Stan, and just, it, it, you know, it, it, you may have, we may be replicating something you're already doing, but here's a space where you could tell a little bit of the story and we appreciate it, and this we hope to make part of that, potentially permanent, but other displays maybe rotating, like um, El Dorado, uh, implosions, different aspects that are interesting of Las Vegas history and that's kind of a revolving display of the quarter or whatever. And he's, he's promised that I'm going to become the next Oprah. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, you're, well yeah, that's, that's the back corner here, right? So that's, sure. that's you know, plenty of already has that's quite a, again, we, we'd like to leverage some of your oral history stuff you've already done. Yeah. We're going to set up video oral history there, so like what was done for the Moulin Rouge from Bailey. Um, video, video archiving. I mean, you know, the, the, what's interesting about this town is most, most of the people who have ever lived in Las Vegas are, are still alive, but it ain't going to be that way forever. So, you know, it's time to start, you know, and, and again, he's doing a lot of that, that work, but making that accessible in the arts district and help help you with your mission if you're if you if you so choose to be part of this space. But um, it, also, I talked with. Um, uh, Dan Roberts from Huntridge Foundation, and he wants to use the space to do interviews. Um, and so it's kind of going to be an open door policy for people when they need a space to interview someone. It, it'll be there for them. And, uh, like a permanent story court kind of thing. Right, and we're hoping to make it, I mean, kind of using the internet to kind of get these things for people when they visit. They can do a keyword search. and. and Commissioner Millman looks like you have a question. <laughs> no, I, I, well, too many. Uh, I haven't been in this history business for right. too long, yeah. quite frankly. Let me just make a real couple to give you, help you. Uh, I, I read somewhere you're going to do a timeline. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, a couple of years ago, in the deep past, I, I did a Las Vegas timeline for, the, for our new museum, and all you'd have to do is go there and copy it if you want to add or subtract, but at least you could you'd have a framework right in front of you. Right. So you don't have to do a lot of work on that. Correct. I mean there's a lot of things I, I think what you're talking about is sort of the popular notion of, of Las Vegas and what tourists yes. think about Las Vegas. You're not you're not talking about anything really you know, nor do you have the space or the time to do anything really uh, deep. You're talking about a fun informative, accurate thing that, that will help the tourists more or less. Well, we right? think, I mean, most people aren't as knowledgeable as the people in this room on, on those right. things. Right. No, I'm just saying a lot of the work has been done for you. It's Correct. Like, you don't yeah. have to start from scratch. Is uh, all I'm I trying spent to. some time with your cohort, Dennis McBride, yeah. and, and, you know, gone through that. He's got me a couple photos to get you started. Yeah, I see one of the photos I cataloged many years ago. <laughs> and, uh, but, but there's things like, you know, Hell Dorado has two L's, and, and regardless uh, of what the L's... Sorry. Regardless of what the L's is tell you, it's 35. Good morning. I do not have a spell, but I, pro I promise we'll, we'll, uh, we'll spell check. It's 35, not 34, when you get around to Hell Dorado. But I would, all I would say that when you're done with it, have somebody check it. Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. 
I think it's great. I think I think you're, that you're willing to give the space to that is great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but how do you uh, uh, pay? Right. How do you pay the rent? Um, I mean, well, people have, uh, get paid to get in. Is there admission? The, the the story is that it's going to be um, in, in terms of security. It's photos of people steal them, and that's you know they're printed up on a. I have a photo printer, and you know, so it's, it can be reprinted. So, in, in hopefully, volunteers, um, and also kind of my day job, the thing we're working on is I can't believe I spelled Hell the Runner wrong because I know exactly how to spell it. But that was that. That's how they spelled the movie because I, I couldn't spell because it. Because I, I, I read it, they didn't want to use the but that's not how it's um, But the one project we're working on too is. Um, this double that dot com in which when people attend an event or get buy a ticket or make a donation to a nonprofit, they get matching slots or gift certificates. Um, so one way we're enticing hopefully people to donate is when they come in the door, do you want to be a gold, silver, bronze, gold, silver member, or maybe bronze is five dollar donation, you get ten dollar and matching gift certificates to El Sombrero could be one of them or different area restaurants and so kind of get them involved as well. And basically the value of those certificates have to be such that they're semi-nominal but maybe pay 30% of what a normal bill would be. Um, so that's, and, and we, we, we're, we would do that with an Android tablet such that people would swipe and, you know, and, and uh, so kind of an automated way for people to pay versus uh, I need someone permanently stationed at the front entrance. And if they don't pay, they don't pay. But um, if, if you get, you know, we, we don't know how many people are going to get in there. But I mean, on a first Friday, we would expect to get a couple hundred. What do you think people's capacity is around at any given time? Um, we need to talk with uh, the fire marshal on that. Okay. They haven't gotten that far yet. And so far, that that if that ends up being concerned, that'll be a good concern. <laughs> I don't perceive that as being a... Well, I, I mean, I'll say, as you know, the, the, there's an ancient historic picture of me on the last page. <laughs> correct, correct. Well, <laughs> I, I, what I find is it interesting that you, that you consider anything 30 or 40 years ago as this old... <laughs> 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 yeah, I know, right? You're not nearly as old as Jim Bilbrey. Yes. No, that's true. So, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the reason uh, Smiling Jim is on here, at least not... A picture of him smiling is that um, his daughter is best friends with my wife, so I'm hoping he, Jim doesn't know he's going to be involved. He's got a lot of stories and a lot of photos and things, so. Um, the real reason I brought that up is, is are you going to try and cover the, the period from, I mean, what's, what's your starting point, or is it going to really be? You know, kind of the 60s when Las Vegas had another... It's going to be the Las Vegas story. So it's going to be a little bit pre-1905. Okay. I mean, for, I mean, there's not, there aren't a lot of photos from that era, but the auction peri period, um, railroad strike, the, the dam, of course, will be big, well represented in the display. Um, but there's room for 300 photos okay. in the front. And... Um, I think you tell, basically, that there are a lot of niche museums um, in, in the city, like Neon Museum or Atomic Museum or Mod Museum. And there's, this is just, a, it's not as, it's mission, of course, it's not, not as big as Nevada State, but it's a, a simple place where someone can learn a lot about history in, in a short amount of time and see some really interesting photos. And I mean, a lot of these photos aren't on, won't be exhibited elsewhere right now. And also, I mean, the last page here, the um, community, I mean, I find old family, if there's old family portraits at, in front of the landmark or something, I mean, just something uh, fascinating. You know, Polaroid photos from uh, the 60s, I mean, just, I, I think, personally, I like to see that. I don't know what else in town I can see that. I and mean, that's where the community, uh, you know, somehow hopefully get a little bit of PR effort and get the community involved. And, um, yeah, so some these are some of the groups we're hoping to leverage. Uh, and we've talked with some of these so far, and we have a lot of talking, a lot more action. I would hope that you'd be able to, to have a spot there where you could have brochures from 
the Neon Museum, the Bob Museum, the, the State Museum, the Atomic Museum, where you know you're gonna you're, you're getting people that are museum or history oriented, so if you have brochures that they could pick up to see the other places. Well, for sure, we'll cross cross down not only with those, but we also are 150 yards away from Rick's Restoration, which is the spin of you know uh, pawnbrokers. I mean, pawnbrokers. Hopefully, if we have their brochure, they'll have ours, and you know. It's kind of the itchy toe. Okay, you just went right down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, this is it's, uh, um, kind of a fun, hopefully the same people would visit one of those, maybe would be inclined to. It's not the heavy hitter history museum. It'll be a little bit lighter there, but it, uh, um, it's not going to be real in-depth. It'll be it as in-depth as you can get for... for uh, but to, fo but to follow up a little bit on what it's, I think it's important to have links to UNLV or State Museum or Clark County because you may attract people that want to donate things, but you you're not going you really can't be in that business there and telling you what to do. But if you have links to these other things, then people can say, well, well okay, they didn't want it, but I can donate it here. I'm, I'm just just following up on you know. It, because you may attract, you know, a tourist who's got a postcard from right. his wife back in the 20s, and and if they don't know that, if they, if they don't, they don't know that UNLV or State Museum exists, they know you exist because they're downtown. That's all. Just saying, I think having links are important. That's all. For, for sure. I mean, if we get something in, we would be for sure wanting to share those with anyone else who wanted them, and we have to get well, you know, the, the release from, from whoever submits photos. And well, I mean, yeah, well, that's sort of dangerous. Where you just when you get something in, that means you're taking. It. I'm just saying, so you can tell the public who's ever staffing it where they should go if they have a donation. That's all. I'm trying right. To say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you want to be in the business of taking anything in. Well, I mean, for display purposes, what we I'm talking about donations. I'm talking about. Oh, well, the question is, are you non-profit? Yeah, well, we are working on that. So, yeah, we haven't filed the, any, we haven't become, our, our intent is to become a LLC and then have a non 501 c 3 designation. So you got a ways to go before you're going to open the door. When do you want to open the door? We're discussing that. <laughs> uh, but a lot of it's going to depend on the input we get. I mean, we could we get open the door, it depends how, you know, at some point, we want kind of the 80-20 rule. I mean, it's, it's, we're not going to wait until everything is perfect, but we're going to wait until it's 80% that's perfect. And, um, you know, a lot of it's going to be community involvement from, from people like you, Bob, and we're actually going to come, we're going to take you up on your offer to visit your place and get leverage your collection a little bit maybe. And, um, and maybe Mr. Bilbray could write the LLC's things for you. Maybe. <laughs> maybe pricey, but... As far as nonprofit, I'd avoid terms like Tea Party and Progressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. We'll uh, do that. I, I wanted to add a little bit of clarification. I think what Commissioner Nolan was, was saying was that, you know, the actual archiving of the historic materials that people bring in is a whole other complicated mm -hmm. issue. So I think what he was saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is that Collecting the stuff and actually keeping it on site, it's probably better to, you know, make, maybe make a photocopy and display. We don't want it. Well, yeah, we will. We'll just scan, scan the original. Is that what you were? You were because um, our yeah, yeah. is a whole. You know, and in fact, our intent will be to have. Okay. Our, our intent will be to have a site such that okay, a summons in Tuscaloosa, but they visited. You know, back in the 60s, they have an interesting photo. They can scan it and write their own caption. Right. You know, because basically that, that's their history. So there's, um, they're the fact checkers on any community, uh, community submitted photos. So. Um, I have a question. Uh, it says you would like to involve the Historic Preservation Commission. And what way specifically? The commission as a as an agency. Well, I mean, I, I think all of you folks have certain niches. You know, I can learn. I uh, can learn a lot from from all of you, and you probably all. I mean, we like opinions because we yeah we need to learn what we're doing here. So, 
So you're talking I mean, about just I mean, I'm reading in the process of reading your book, for instance. I mean, that's input, right? Um, and uh, yeah, potentially coffee, meeting for coffee, or potentially if you have photos that are not part of, or you can point us to special collections or point us to someone who has your photos or any. Would you, I guess the question is really as, as a body of the city of Las Vegas representing the city of Las Vegas as opposed to individually talking to us and with ideas and so forth, is there something that as a city, you would like the city of Las Vegas to be part of, uh, or just the individual members to give you expertise or whatever, or photographs and so forth? Is something, this body, the city of Las Vegas, you well, guys have to do? In terms of the, 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 when I think of the city, then I think of money, and then I think of Courtney. Because <laughs> she's so she rich. She sent me a form, you know, you have, uh, and I think that was the, uh, what Dr. Miller was dying for was another installment of the, uh, you know, so we hope to apply for that once we get everything a little bit further down this road here. Um, but, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, there's there some sponsor opportunities at different, you know, kind of learn as we go along. Um, so yeah. I think we've learned that we probably want to have your content finished before you apply for the grant. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Well, yes, maybe, right? Uh, but we'll get, we're, we're, we're started. We're started. Okay, great. Right. All right, well, thanks so much. So, yeah, well, we're attempting to do a nice job for, for the city and, and hopefully help a lot of people learn about the most famous history. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Report by Department of Planning regarding update on West Side School Restoration Project located at 330 West Washington Avenue. The main things to report are that the architectural conservators were on site. Um, the 1948 building, at some point, I believe in the 90s, there was um, some work done on the, the windows were filled in with tiles, which were created by uh, local students. Uh, part of the rehabilitation is to remove those and put those on site somewhere and then put the original windows back in. Um, and the conservators were out trying to do some um, testing to determine if there were actually windows there because the, the 1923 building has those false windows and there may be uh, some clues to say that those windows weren't actually there and the tiles could remain in place. And we're waiting to hear back on that. Uh, and they also tested um, for uh, paint colors, um, uh, um, mortar, um, uh, how the mortar was, was um, the makeup of the mortar, um, and um, additional materials testing. So we hope to receive their report. They took uh, a number of of samples and um, we should be getting a report within a month. The part one and part two uh, federal investment tax credit application, I'm sorry, the historic preservation uh, tax credit application was submitted to the State Historic Preservation Office and um, they, they received, Chow received a couple of comments back so um, they'll be making some revisions and then we should, that report should be sent off to um, the uh, National Park Service within a month. And I believe that's it for the updates. We should be receiving another update in three months. Okay, thank you. There's no questions, so uh, we'll move on to number nine, report by Department of Planning regarding the status of the Victory Hotel located at 307 South Main Street. Not a whole lot to report on this other than the uh, finance and the finance department is still working with LSD on finalizing that contract. Is there a deadline on that, Courtney? I'm sorry? Is there, was there a time or a deadline? Or? There was not a deadline. In their proposal, they said it would take them about six months from the, the start date. So mm -hmm. we're just finalizing that contract. So we would have the report in six months from that date. <coughs> Uh, number 10, report by Department of Planning regarding administrative reviews of applications for building permits for properties listed on the City of Las Vegas Historic Property Registry. Staff approved a building permit application to install an exterior door at the rear of the former Nevada State 
uh, museum building at Lindsay Park. So I, I have a minor question. Sure. The photo on the back of that, that cage. <laughs> well, no. Oh. It's not the <laughs> State Museum building. <laughs> That's the new Nevada State Museum building. Okay. <laughs> it's like getting, it's, you know, they kicked out of the springs. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. That's an error. Downsizing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. I have to embarrass you somehow. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's pleasant work. laughs> uh, number item 11. Report by Department of Planning regarding historic and archaeological resources and local media. Very thorough, as always. What? Any comments? Okay. Oh, yeah. Lots of hot stuff going on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. Bob, you were on the panel on Thursday nights. Uh, was there anything like that? No, it was. About 150 people were there. And uh, it ran the, uh, the, the gamut of, of folks that uh, lived in the neighborhood to uh, musicians that played at the Hunter, uh, to everybody sort of in between. There was a, uh, a lot of folks, uh, not a lot, there were maybe 20% of the audience were folks of my age, uh, another 20%, 25%, I'd say up to a third were, were younger folks, and then just everybody in between. It was a good discussion. I think the bottom line is in order for the Hunter <laughs> To work, it has to have a plan that really makes business sense. Mm -hmm. There's just not $14 million sitting out there in some grant that's going to magically turn that place into uh, a 1,500-seat theater anymore. Uh, I think they're trying to do it. Uh, uh, they're trying to get some money to come up with a, a plan. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it was pretty informal. I think they've got some calendar. They've got to come up with another eighteen thousand dollars for another fifty thousand dollar payment. Uh, then that will give them, I think, another three or four months to come up with a business plan. But the clock, the clock runs. Uh, the the current owners are have to adhere to the uh, covenant by the state of Nevada, which uh, says. They're supposed to be doing more than they're doing, and, and it's supposed to be open a certain number of days a year. Uh, but when they purchased the uh, the, the Huntridge, they got it for a bargain price because of the covenant. Mm -hmm. And so there, that covenant is good through July 1st of 2017, which sounds like a long way away, but it's not. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, and then there's also a covenant in there that we've been unable to find, but it's been addressed in several newspaper stories uh, in the day about the city's redevelopment agency, that it gave the hunters $150,000 along with a covenant that it would be open until 2023 as a community entertainment venue. But so far, redevelopment has been able to uncover that covenant. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be surprised if it's not in the deed somewhere. I think those, I don't know the real estate, but whenever there's a covenant or a lien, don't they find that when they do it? It usually gets recorded. Yeah. Yeah. As a deed restriction or. Yeah. Which acts the same as a lien or a judgment or anything else. I mean, it's. So I don't know where to find it, I don't know where to go to get that. Uh, we, we have to dig into the recorder's office. It can be found. It should, if it's, if it's, they actually, covenants, covenants don't need to be recorded, and generally speaking, they will be, because if somebody loses the piece of paper, right. uh, the person that wants to enforce the covenant wants to be able to go back and do it, even though the paper doesn't exist. Right. The way you do it is you stick it on the, the you record it against the property itself. So, um, this is going to have to be uh, a title search. Right. So someone's going to have to go and pull it. Well, I mean, if, the, if these new people are able to raise the money during the transfer of the sale of the property, there will be a normal title search. <coughs> right. You would think it, it would be uncovered at that point. Right. So that's out there. Uh, uh, the place looks, you have to really squint uh, to kind of see where it is. By the way, there's an identical one in Southern California that's still up. Same guy, uh, uh, what from Southern California? Boy, I just said it out of my mouth. I did. <laughs> it's Glen, Glendale, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 
Um, but there, he has a whole book uh, in his biography with all his photographs and uh, another architectural thing he did. So at least we have a blueprint of what it could look like again. Yeah, we're going to do that. All right. Uh, report by Department of Planning regarding project update list. I apologize because I don't have a color line yet for some reason. So I'm not sure exactly which ones had updates, but I do know that the 2013 HPF grant, I just got the letter from the State Historic Preservation Office. We had asked for 45000 and they funded the grant for 30000 So I'll need to kind of scale down the scope of work and resubmit the, um, any scope and revised budget. And, and if there's anything else on here that's red that you have a question about, let me know. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> What was, I'm sorry, what was it for? Uh, oh, for the um, Beverly Green. Uh, no, this 2013 one is for uh, Hundredge. Oh, okay, right. That is fine. Okay, uh, number 13, report by Department of Planning regarding downtown project list. And this is also, uh, unfortunately, Director Faggis and here to report on this. So we don't get the list? We don't get the list. Um, and there is no, gosh, my phone doesn't show up. Everything goes to, I apologize. There's no map in there. Do we made that item? Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Yeah. one update, I think the uh, new White Cross Market is finally going to open next week, I oh, think. Yeah. Oh, oh, wonderful. It's been a long time coming, but it should be open next week. And it's supposed to be just a regular market? A little grocery store, store yeah. Should be like for a high end? No, no it's okay. just going to be like a lower end local grocery store. The, the various meetings and all that, there's a thing, Bell's uh, market that's It's the same owner as Bell's market, but it'll, it'll be a little more scale than that. meetings that they would be really responsive to, what do you ask is what you want to have here, and they'll try to get it, so, I mean, I don't think they can turn it into Whole Foods, but... Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but they're shocking the shelves this week, so... The shock the shelves, right. Right. And the facade of, as we remember, White Cross Drugs now says White Cross Market, and they're keeping the White Cross name, and Tiffany's is still inside, and Tiffany's has its own bathroom now, and if you haven't been into Tiffany's lately, it's uh, a little approved, and uh, still one of the last real counters left in Las Vegas, the last counter left in Las Vegas, so. I had a really greasy hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I mean, that's what you were saying. There's no other counter? <laughs> huh? There's no other counter? Not that I'm... How big that? Actually, at the Humphreys Pharmacy, there's a counter, but nobody's operating it right now. Yeah, uh -huh. Jerry's Nugget Cafe is a counter. Mm -hmm. the old tradition of, you know, like a Woolworths oh, store, store right. you know, store with yeah, the counter yeah. is the last one left, and it should actually, you know, get, it should become more popular than like this. The inside is Kate Edwards, right? They also have the counter? Just like the Hundred, it's set up almost exactly like the Hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, it where? The cater, I think it's called the cater liquors or something. Yeah. There's the, 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 the bar, and then there's the diner, just like the Hundred, and then there's uh, like a like a drugstore. Yeah. The cater. Yeah. yeah. And by by Pep Boys. By the Arizona Show. Uh -huh. Yeah, they got a cast. Uh, used to have good Chinese. Oh yeah. Item fourteen. Consideration and possible action regarding topics of future agenda items by the Historic Preservation Commission. Comments made during this por portion of the agenda by individual commission members shall refer solely to proposals for future agenda items, and any discussion shall be limited to whether or not any such proposed items are within the purview of the commission and whether such proposed items shall be placed on the future agenda. No discussion regarding the substance of any such proposed topic shall occur, and no other action shall be taken regarding the proposal. Any topics for future agenda? Okay, item 15, citizens' participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the board. No subject may be acted upon by the board unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name for the record. 
the amount of discussion on any sub single subject, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Any public comment? Other than uh, I've emailed everybody to the, the Flamingo Club party at my house Saturday night, the uh, official meeting, uh, James. Uh, <laughs> 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 but anyway, if you're going to be invited, it's going to be a youth party. Seven it's going to be hot, so dress casual. Uh, it starts at 7, uh, my backyard is probably shaded by 7, so uh, I think we're good to go to the Mr.'s work and uh, the very cool house, and uh, I'd love you all to join us. I'll be with Dave Clark. I probably noticed. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Commissioner Hodgkiss. <laughs> 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 <laughs>